Hey, beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to talk about how to hear God's voice. Um, you might want to get your pen and paper, paper because I am going to give you some practical steps and um, you might want to write something down. I have some notes here. So if I look down, be prepared um, for that because I, I don't want to miss anything. And so this is teaching for those who feel like they have a prophetic gift and for those also who just want to hear God's voice. Some people just want to know and be confident in um, the voice of God when they hear and see God. So we're going to get into that. And again, these are going to be practical steps. And so one of the things that you can do, one of the things first that I believe is that the Bible says in John 10, 27, is that you can ha hear God's voice as a child of God. It says that my sheep know my voice. In John 3 and verse 4, it talks about how God, how his sheep, Jesus' sheep, hear his voice. But then he says, they know my voice. And so hearing is one thing. You may hear God's voice, but knowing his voice and understanding who you're hearing is part of hearing, knowing and understanding, being in intimately acquainted with God's voice so that when you hear his voice, you know it's him. You're confident in um, how he speaks to you. And I believe I've done a video in the different ways God speaks, but I'll get a little bit into that here in this video. But you can be confident in his voice when you hear him speak to you. So you have a right, a blood bought right as a child of God to hear and know God's voice. Or you can say it this way, to know his voice and to hear it, to ask him questions and to receive answers through his voice. Whether it is a still quiet voice when he speaks to you, it is his written word, it is through a sign or someone else, an impression, a song, how nature, however, prayer, time, dream, vision, however God chooses to speak to you, you have a right to know and hear his voice. And then I want to talk about, I'm laying the foundation. A lot of people um, want to prophesy and prophecy is a gift of the spirit. It's not a fruit of the spirit. So some people will treat prophecy like it's something that you can turn on, but it's something that you have to, that you can desire. First Corinthians 14, one says, covet or desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. So because it's a gift, he gives it to us. And I believe that you can pray and ask God to sharpen your hearing and you can pray and ask God to give you the spiritual gift of prophecy. That's not actually how I received it, but I do believe that you can ask for it and, and receive it that way. It just kind of fell on me um, through serving in my local church, which I will come to. But there were other um factors in that. Um, but that being said, you can ask God for this gift and then you can build fruit out of the gift. You can make it fruitful. You can sharpen it. You can grow in your gifts. So, and I'm going to talk about how to do that. Um, but what I want to address first is that, like I said, you don't just prophesy at will. You prophesy as you're led by the Spirit when He has something to say. I think it's important that we just don't think we can turn it on. Um, and I know people that do that and prophesy that way. I came up in a um, season or when you allow God to speak. You didn't just prophesy because we can prophesy out of our soul, out of our flesh, out of our own selves, the Bible says. But when God has something to say to someone, he will uh, use your spiritual gift if you are uh, a willing vessel, if you are available. And it's important that we do that because we want to be accurate. We don't want to just be prophesying to people. That's how people get into um, just prophesying on demand for people and they get into error and we all can fall short. We know in part the Bible says and we prophesy 
prophesy in part, 1 Corinthians 13, that you can be more accurate with these simple things I'm going to tell you, but also in not just giving out prophetic words. Usually on this channel, I prophesy or give prophetic encouragement in a general way. But when I'm giving a, and that's because the Lord is speaking that to the body of Christ. But when I'm giving a specific prophet, prophetic word to a person, I, um, and it's going to govern their life. You better believe and know that it is God. If you don't, we, we, we should know that we're hearing his voice and we have to trust it. A lot of it is trusting God. Um, but when you learn to trust his voice and you're led by the spirit and you're following him and you're releasing the prophetic word by faith, the Bible says we are to use our gifts by faith. We do these things by faith, but you have to have a trust in God to know that he's not going to lead you astray and that it's going to be an accurate word. And I think that, um, when we teach people to prophesy just, you know, out of themselves and not to lean into the Holy Spirit, then it could come, you know, because it's so important and people govern their lives by prophetic words, there's prophetic words that will speak to you. And some people get held, held by that word and don't move forward. And it was off or it was wrong and things like that. We hear about that a lot and, you know, destroying people's lives. Um, moving, directing them to go in the wrong way and all of that because they believed it was a prophetic word. And so I think it's important if you feel like you have this gift, if you believe that God is giving you this gift, that you um, nurture it and that you um, respect it and honor it enough not to just, you know, speak into people's life. Thus says the Lord, and you're not sure what he's saying. But again, it's a balance because you have to trust and release. You have to trust and release, but I'm going to move on from that. Okay. So I want to talk about some things. The first thing I want to talk about is spending time in quiet prayer, learning his voice talking to him like a father and a friend and waiting for him to speak back to you. Um, lots of times in my prayer, I'm just laying before the father and hearing, hearing and seeing because part of my prophetic gift is the seer gift. So I see things. I see um, words. I see images. I see things. And from there, God puts things together. And when I release from that place of seeing, I have to trust that God is going to say something um, that is accurate to the person or to the people that I'm speaking to. And when I release the word on this channel, I realize that it may not be for everyone. So if I say prophetic word, then uh, if, or a prophetic word of encouragement. I use prophetic word a lot because of the algorithm, but it's prophetic ministry, prophetic wisdom, prophetic encouragement, words of wisdom, words of knowledge under that gift. And, but the algorithm, you know, it wants certain words in order to push your video. So that's, uh, you know, how I have to do it. But I understand that it may not be for everyone. And so if I say something and it doesn't resonate resonate with you, know that it may not be for you, but it's for someone else that you might want to share it with. Okay, so we talked about sitting with God and hearing his voice so he can talk to you and and you can talk to him like a father and a friend. You have to make time for God. You have to make room for him. And then the way that he talks to you in these times and even through his word and everything else is that he guides you with instruction, direction, and correction. But we have to be willing to not only hear him, but obey him. Because when we... um when we continually disobey him, um, we show him that we're not interested in his word. And then he begins to shut down. So we can't shut out the word continu continually or hear and not obey, but we have to be doers of the word that we hear. And that's James one twenty three. So not only are we hearers and we know his voice, as Jesus said, but there's something that we have to do and we have to do or obey the instruction, the direction, the 
the correction that the Lord gives us, the, to, to whom some is given to them that hear and obey, more will be given. But those that do, that hear and don't obey or don't hold on to it, then less it will be taken away. That what you have will be taken away. This is what Jesus was talking about in one of the parables. So you have to hear. And then, and then it says here that, um, The spirit of prophecy, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. So I want to talk about the next one. So number one was sitting with the Lord, right? And hearing his uh, voice and talking to him and expecting to hear back from him. But in order to hear God, I should have started with this one first. And this is spending time reading his word. I cannot stress this enough. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. The testimony of Jesus is found when is built and it grows as you spend time in his word, fellowshipping with him through his written word. And so today, as I talk a little bit more about that, I want to share with you some of the ways that I hear his word. If you are, uh, if you have been watching me for any time, you see my Bible I've had, I guess for maybe 10 years now. This is my maybe third long-term Bible. Um, my others are in my, um, are in my um, bookshelf. But this is one that I've had for maybe the past 10 years or so. And this is what I read as I sit with the Lord in fellowship because um, I just, when I'm in prayer, but hearing God and spending time in prayer with him, I feel is a different discipline from the daily reading of the word, right? And so there's a discipline to, um, a spiritual discipline to reading the word of God. And so that's why I said these are practical steps. This is one of the Bibles. I hope you can see this. I'll leave a link down below, but this is the ESV English Standard Version of the daily reading Bible. Uh, through the Bible in a year. So each year I try to read the Bible through in a year. And this is one of my favorites. And then this is another one. This is new. I usually get this one in ESV and um, I didn't, I forgot to grab it, but I also have read the chronological Bible. So I'll, do, I'll put that one in the link as well. I like the chronological because it talks about, it goes to the Bible in a year in the order of the events that they happen, not necessarily in the order of the event, events that they were placed in the Bible, that the traditional Bible, but it takes the events and it puts it in the order that they happen. So when we purchase a Bible and we read from Genesis to Revelation, those are not necessarily the way things happen, but they're, they are put together and ordered in a way that it puts, you know, prophets together, um, the Torah together, or I believe that's what I should call it. The first, I believe five books of the Bible, um, and it just goes through that way, minor prophets and all, so it has an order that it goes through, but those are not necessarily the way that it, that the, the events took place. And so the chronological Bible will help you to see how those events took place. And so that's one I've read before. Um, but I really like, so this, so that's one, the chronological Bible, the ESV daily reading Bible. And this is just, the, as I said, the English standard version. And this is the Bible just the word and it gives you a little bit of the new testament and the old testament testament some people like to read just straight through the bible i like to read a psalm and a proverb and then um some of the old and some of the new and so i like that this type and there's others but these are my favorites and what i like to do um, i have also um read the king james version straight 
through as well as far as a daily reading Bible, just from Genesis to Revelation. And then this is one that I had given away to someone. So I bought another one because I really like this one. And if you've been on my channel for any time, you've heard me talk about how I really um, love Charles Stanley. So this is the Charles Stanley Life Principles Daily Reading Bible. And so it has a um, part of the Bible that you read each day. And then you have um, a life principle. And this one is really good. I've gone through it before. And so I bought myself another one because this is the one I want to read this uh, in 2023. And so I will link those as well as the chronological Bible. But the reason why I wanted to go through that is because, you know, we have our time when God you know, leads us to a word, uh, or I have my time and maybe God does that for you too. He leads me to different verses and scriptures as I'm spending time with him, fellowshipping in his word. But then I set aside time to just read his word on a daily basis. I don't always have to feel it. I don't always have to want to do it. I just read it as a spiritual discipline. Discipline. Why? Because it builds the word in me. It builds the witness of Jesus Christ, the testimony of Jesus Christ in me so that when I am praying and I'm listening to his voice in my quiet time, um, I am then able to, I am then able to hear his voice. So you have to get word into you be in order to hear his voice. So the more word that you get into you, the more he will speak to you because God often speaks, um, through, he will give you direction and correction specifically for your life, but it should line up with the word. And that's how you learn to be accurate because if something is not lining up with this word, it doesn't have to be the exact word, but the principle of the word. And then a lot of times God will speak to you scripture and verse. At least he speaks to me like that. And many people that I know, he'll give you a scripture and verse to go to because it's a place where you've met with him, where you've come to know him and you come to know his voice so that when he speaks to you, you, he can speak to you through his word. And so you want to have that and you want to spend time doing those things undistracted. Find a place where you remove distractions and you make time to hear God's word when you read it and journal what you are receiving for yourself. And even in prayer, I always bring a journal. So I have the my seasons journal, which I normally share on here. And that's to just to record the beauty, blessings, purpose, and lessons. But then I just buy a, a journal from Ross. And I, if I hear something, I have journals and some of my most precious possessions are journals. So I will just jot something down and I always date it because I have journals that go back to the beginning of my salvation over 20 years ago. And I can go back and look at those words, see things I'm still praying for, the promises and prophet words God gave to me, the ones where I was being led by my flesh and I was, you know, crying out to God, but it wasn't his will that I could scratch out and just laugh at some of the things I wrote and then things that have been fulfilled. And so I always have that, but I say, you know, set aside time and, and make a place and a time to meet with the Lord. That is so important and that will bless you on a daily. Make it a discipline. If you've never tried it, I encourage you to read through the Bible um, in 2023. Get one that fits you. I hope the ones I have helped, uh, I have shared with you will bless you and then read through it and you're going to see how much you hear God's word. And if you have a prophetic um, ministry and God has called you to the prophetic uh, uh, gift, has given you the prophetic gifting and called you to the prophetic ministry, then it's going to sharpen your gift because you're going to hear the word, the witness of Jesus Christ is going to be in you. The testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. And that spirit of prophecy, his testimony, he's in this book from beginning to end, is going to build and he's going to reside. He's already on the inside of you, but it's going to be, his spirit is going to be big inside of you. 
and you're going to hear and be able to prophesy. And then he said, my sheep know my voice and another voice they will not follow. Therefore, you're going to start knowing when other voices are not his and you're going to start turning away from things because you're not going to want to hear that. You're not going to want to conflict his voice with the voice of the world and things that don't line up with him and things that would grieve his spirit. But here's this last thing. Serve in a place that allows you to sharpen your spiritual gifts. So when we talk about hearing God's voice, that's personally, but it also comes alive in prophecy because you have to be able to trust the voice and you're not just prophesying out your head, but you're hearing the voice and it's not here. It's an inner witness in your spirit where you're hearing and whether it's gentle or sometimes loud, you're releasing by faith what God is saying to you or showing you to, into a person's life. And that comes from, um, from the time that you spend with him. But then when you serve in a place where you can sharpen your gift, but not only sharpen your spiritual gift, your prophetic gifts, gift, but also receive that covering for your gift and, um, a place where you can, that can help bring correction to you and discipline to your gift when you need it. 1 Corinthians 14, 29 says, let the prophets judge one another. Let two or three prophesy and let the prophets judge. I'm paraphrasing. So you'll have those that can judge and lovingly correct you if you weren't there. If you're prophesying out of turn, if you're prophesying out of your flesh, you can have that gentle correction. So you want to be someplace that receives the, the fivefold ministry, that welcomes the fivefold ministry, and that will help you um, in, in, in sharpening your gift. And so I hope that this has helped you. The four thing, oh, the three things. And then the last thing would be fasting and consecrating your life, setting aside time or setting aside time to, yes, go without food. Um, not, you know, sometimes just one day fast with just juice and water or whatever your doctor, doctor will allow you to do, but fasting the least amount of food or fasting one or two meals a day and spending that time with the Lord, not just going without food, but spending that time consecrated unto the Lord during that time, seeking his face at least an hour or so during that time uninterrupted um, and not doing other things. So I'll talk about that when I talk about my experience with fasting in another um video that I'll be releasing so that I'm trying to help you guys get ready for the new year as I'm preparing myself. And so I'm going to do, I'm going to try and get a few videos out this week before the new year. And I believe the next one is going to be on fasting. I have a lot of exciting things coming up. I want to share with you guys, but I will share that before the new year. That will probably be the last one. So spending quiet time with the Lord, reading his word. I should have did that first, reading his word, spending quiet time, with the Lord and hearing his voice, serving at your local church um, or a local ministry that allows you to prophesy and learn and sharpen your gift. And then fasting. These are the things. Mine was a local church that helped me hear God and be confident in his voice and begin to prophesy clearly and confidently. Um, and so... Um, I think I have another video, maybe I'll link it, about my journey into prophetic ministry. So I won't go into a lot of detail here, but on top of that journey in the local church, which is so important and cannot be replaced by a YouTube channel or anything else, um, it was reading the word, reading the word, knowing the word. I come on here on Saturday morning and the word comes out and it flows out of me because I have spent years reading the Bible during the year and spent on top of that, separate from my prayer time. It's a separate spiritual discipline. For me, I have to separate them because I work and I have four kids and all these things. So my prayer time in the morning and then reading the word, um, maybe in the evening or finding another time in whatever season I was in to make that happen, but knowing that one shouldn't replace the other and that I need the quiet time and prayer time of worship and prayer and, and sitting with the Lord and reading, flowing through this Bible wherever he 
that shows me or whatever is encouraging and inspiring and equipping me for the season and even the day and the moment that I'm in so that I can um, keep going and be built up in my faith. And then just the discipline of the word that also builds me up, but equips me to serve others are two different things that we have to make time for. And so that has helped me. And so I hope that this video has helped you. If you have any more questions, something I didn't answer, please let me know. Um, and please subscribe to this channel and use the links that I will leave in the description if you would like to check out my new little Amazon store. I don't know if I'll put it in my Amazon store because I'm still creating it or if I'll just put the links down there. But you can definitely take a look at those links and um, get your uh, get your one year Bible and also this is my favorite devotional, my utmost for his highest. As you can see, it is torn up because I read it every year. And the one that I have for nearly 20 years, I end up giving away to someone. And so I bought this one like two or three years ago. And the other one I had for almost 20 years. And, you know, I bought other devotionals and I love this Oswald Chambers. This is one of my favorites. And, you know, if you want something that really is deep and, um, and really touches the life of Christ in us, I would recommend that one. So again, I hope this helped you and um, I look forward to uh, sharing with you about fasting and the things coming in the new year. God bless you. Until next time, I'm just looking to see, did I forget anything? I hope that I did not. I wrote everything down. Yes, I think I got it all. So God bless you and I'll see you in the next video. Please subscribe and give this video a thumbs up.